American valleys are not the problem. Uh, what are some of our American valleys? Well, I'm considering the Constitution and the amendments, first and second. So like the Bill of Rights, these are rights that are uh, inalienable, right? Yes. They're God-given, as they say, right? Yeah. Natural rights. So they're not given by government or God or any, I mean, they're, they're natural rights in that they're not bestowed from us by government. There are recognized. Recognized, as our right. Rights, that yeah. there are, these are places that governments should not ever uh, violate. Right, and one of them would be. Who's like, doing this interview? You or me? Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep saying it, man. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> I just want to make sure that we're on the same page with that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so then, uh, what, what, which one of these uh, rights then, values do you, are you uh, advocate or find more? I guess uh, value more. I guess in this situation here at this rally. Well, this one is obviously a more gun control, more gun banning confiscation, which does nothing. We've had years of doing that. Even in Maryland, we're a very high violent state, and we have some of the most strictest of gun rules and laws. They don't do anything. Criminals don't obey those laws. Right. So our point is, quit restricting American citizens' rights, but deal with the problem, which is criminal activity with guns, put them in jail, don't slap the wrist and revolving door justice system, get them out in three months. That kind of problem is what causes so much of the violence, especially in Baltimore and in Maryland. A lot of it is gang violence. That's yeah. that's very true. Yeah. Right. And you find uh, okay. cities with the highest uh, gun laws and legislation restriction on self-defense have also some of the highest homicides and murder rates and versus other cities and areas that don't have such things, right? Um, I like the way you interview. <laughs> And you mentioned gun confiscation. That's never really bode well uh, for countries worldwide who have done that. Yes, right? exactly. Uh, so we don't want to go down that route. We don't want to go that route. Every major shooting seeds to push that, kick that can down the road further. Right. And there's a rash of gun laws that come up after every major shooting, especially the Parkland, Florida one. Maryland General Assembly was putting out, must have been 20 different gun regulations, limiting magazine sizes, certain kinds of firearms, bump stocks, everything's becoming illegal in yeah. Maryland. So it's all started by some mass shooting. So it, it's they're going off the easy, feel-good way that has no effect. Right. And it was a mass shooting in which uh, perhaps could have uh, deterred most of the deaths had the government uh, service actually proceeded to encounter the shooter, right? They stood down, they hid uh, for them, right? They never engaged, right? Uh, so what do you think of then, there's many Supreme Court rulings that said that there is no obligation for the government, for the police to protect their life, liberty, property. Uh, so of course, when seconds count and they're minutes away and they come after the fact, uh, do you think then the first person responsibility is of defenses on the individual level. Yes, definitely. So, and you hit right on it. The police have no duty to protect you as an individual. General safety, sure, but the individual, there's no uh, recognized right. And even the Supreme Court on the other side there yeah. said that um, police cannot be sued right. uh, for their lack of protection of somebody. So it is on us. Now, we're law abiding, we don't commit crime. In fact, concealed carry permit holders, for instance, uh, are the safest group among the various groups, even more safe when it comes to violent crimes or criminal activity than police are. Now, they hate that statistic, but, yeah. you know, so don't slam us, please. You right. know, we, we have rights and we want our safety as well. You never hear of a mass shooting at a gun show, for example. Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but you do hear them at gun-free zones. Right, yes. and with gun-free zones, only seem to protect only the shooter, mm -hmm. since no one else has the means to defend themselves. That's right. Right, and in the schools, I know you see a lot, a lot of issues debating about should uh, teachers and staff be armed or not, or at least have a, an armed resource officer. In the last couple of incidents, the resource officer was able to shorten uh, the amount of time that the shooter was shooting. So, I'm for training up volunteers not forced yeah, out because exactly. a lot of teachers are scared of guns right. okay that's fine but there's many uh, and i'm one of them um who would gladly volunteer to take the faster program for instance i don't know whether you've heard of that which trains teachers how to deal with uh, 
a mass shooting in a school. There was an incident in Maryland that happened recently in which a school resource officer uh, stopped. Uh, Mills High School, and I live very close to that. Right. But you don't hear the media attention going wild about that, right? It doesn't fit their No, it doesn't. Uh, they call it also an assault rifle. They can't even define what is an assault rifle. All the mass shootings uh, that were done uh, were semi-automatics. Right, they're not assault rifles, yeah. um, and most of them can not even probably even tell you what an AR stands for, mm -hmm. right? So I think it's awesome that you guys are out here, uh, very pro-gun. Uh, I guess in the face of a, a group of people that would want to take that away from you, yes. right? Well, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank, thank you so you much for, for this interview. <laughs> of course, thanks I'll for coming. I'll do better out. next time. No, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, man. See you later.